Intermittent fasting and fasting is a very sensitive period of time. Little things that you consume or don't consume can throw things totally aloof. So what I want to do in this video is I want to help you understand exactly what can actually slow down the effects of a fast, particularly in the way of vitamins and supplementation. Okay, so we're going to dive into some studies that took a deep dive look at this at the genetic level and overall at the enzymatic and even autophagy level. So we'll break down that in just a second. You are tuned in to the internet's leading performance, fat loss, and nutrition channel. New videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos peppered in throughout the week as well. You have to make sure you hit that little bell button and turn on notifications so you always see my videos. But also, check out highly.com so you can see the latest and greatest premium performance apparel that I'm always decked out in in my videos. Okay, so people ask all the time, what supplements can I take during a fast? I think the easier way to address this is what you absolutely should not take during a fast. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a study that was published in Rejuvenation Research. This was a really cool breakdown. What they did is they took a look at 24 participants over the course of 10 weeks. Okay, so it was a 10 weeks random crossover study, so a randomized crossover study. So what they did is they broke them down into two separate periods of time. For one period of time, they did just intermittent fasting. For another period of time after that, they did intermittent fasting with the addition of antioxidants in the mix. They took vitamin C and they took vitamin E. Now, over the course of both of these test periods, they consumed 175% of their calories on their non-fasting day and 25% of their calories on a fasting day. And they fasted every other day. So trying to make things super simple so everyone can track here, participants fasted every other day. So it was like one day on, one day off. And at the end of all of it, they still consumed a net neutral amount of calories. They didn't want to have any weight loss coming into the equation here. They purely wanted to look at genes and overall antioxidant effect. So the whole purpose of this study was to try to determine what actually happens at the genetic level and what happens in terms of antioxidants and what happens in terms of oxidative stress. So what we have to remember about fasting, and this is super, super important, is whenever you're fasting, you're trying to put stress on your body. The whole benefit of intermittent fasting is coming from the stress you're putting on your body. I know that sounds counterintuitive and counterproductive, but it's true. By depriving yourself of food, by depriving yourself of nutrients, you're putting stress on your body. And it's your body's adaptation to this stress that makes you a more efficient, more effective human being. Okay, so what the researchers wanted to see was if we added antioxidants, did it improve fasting or did it hurt fasting? Well, the results were pretty darn wild. You see, what they actually found is that the fasting group, when they did not consume antioxidants, had a pretty good increase of something known as SIRT3, CERT3. This is a specific gene. Okay, they had a 2.7% increase of CERT3. What this means is that they had an increase in the body's ability to process free radicals, to eliminate them, and to overcome, basically, adversity in terms of the physiological sense. So the body became more efficient Fasting put stress on the body, and it improved at a genetic level, which is so wicked cool, the ability to process oxidative stress. What they found is that when the participants consumed antioxidants, when they had vitamin C and vitamin E during their fasting period, it nullified that effect. There was no increase in CERT3. So basically, what ended up happening is by adding antioxidants during the fast, it gave them a crutch. So their body didn't have the need to adapt as much because it already had the exogenous help from the vitamin C and the vitamin E. Now I'm smiling because that's freaking crazy cool. The body is so sensitive with that. So the best analogy that you can really look at it like this is like, it's like having someone totally sheltered. It's like having a small kid and never letting them see the world, right? They're never having a chance to be exposed to stress. So as they grow up, they essentially become weaker, right? Because they don't have the ability to cope. Well, basically, by fasting and then adding antioxidants in, you're giving yourself a crutch, and you're giving yourselves a crutch so they don't have to deal with it. They don't have to cope. They don't have that coping ability, or at least not as much. So when we look at that, we realize that reactive oxygen species, while fasting, is actually good to a degree. So researchers at Cambridge University wanted to dive a little bit further. So what they did is they took a look at adding a few other things to the mix when people were fasting. They looked at trehalose, which is a kind of sugar. They looked at rapamycin, adding that into the mix. And then they looked at adding an antibiotic into the mix. Okay, this is where things got wild. They were looking at the autophagy effect. They wanted to see if antibiotics and things like that actually affected the body's ability to induce autophagy, to actually start the cellular repair process. Well, guess what? When consuming those things, the body did not go into as much of a state of autophagy. So when you're consuming things that give you a crutch, like an antibiotic, you are reducing the autophagy, the benefit of the fast. 
one more wild and crazy thing. It's also been found that plasma insulin levels, of course, lower when you're fasting. This is one of the main keys to fat loss. We want low insulin levels. But guess what? When you look at intermittent fasting with antioxidant supplementation during your fast, plasma insulin levels didn't decrease. Whoa. Okay, now it's not a matter of breaking your fast, et cetera, et cetera. It's a matter of what's going on at an enzymatic and cellular level. So basically, what we're finding now is that the reason the insulin levels drop so dramatically when you fast is as a result of overcoming stress. So the stress is actually driving the insulin levels down during a fast. And any time we give ourselves a crutch, it stops that process. Now, I'm not here to say that you can't consume this and you can't consume that. I'm not the fasting police. I'm just a purveyor of information. And that's all I'm trying to do is just put good processes out there and put good information out there that's gonna help you get the most out of your fast. So take supplements or don't take supplements. I don't personally really care, but I do wanna give you the information that you can use to get the most out of it. So if you're gonna suffer through a fast, it's a little bit difficult, you might as well be getting the benefit. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you in the next video.